Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today you're going to learn how to create powerful user interfaces for your Python scripts using the tkinter module. Now, before we start, it is important to note that tkinter is not the only module, the only library that you can use to create user interfaces for your Python programs. tkinter is, however, really powerful because it is a part of a Python standard library which makes it really convenient to use. It's also lightweight and quite powerful, making it a perfect fit for the task at hand. As you can clearly see, I'm using Visual Studio Code by Microsoft, however you can use whichever text editor you prefer, as long as you use it with a recent version of Python 3. Alright, as you can see I'm using Python 3.7.2 and I'm currently on Linux Manjaro. However, as I said, what really matters is using a recent version of Python 3 because creating user interfaces with tkinter in Python 2 requires a slightly different syntax from the one that we're gonna use. So, let's get started. Considering that, as I said, tkinter is part of Python's standard library, the first thing that we need to do is import the module. So we can do import tkinter as tk. Using a short version of a name will of course allow us to access the module's classes faster. As you will soon discover, creating user interfaces with Python and the TK Inter module is pretty easy. There are a couple of things, however, that it's important to keep in mind. First of all, we need a window. We need to create a root widget that will allow us to host a wide variety of other widgets within our own window. And because we are using a graphical user interface, of course, we need the main widget. All right, we can do like so, tk.tk. So we are instantiating our tk object, okay? So we can now start to add properties to this instance. For example, we can add a geometry, defining width and length of our window. So we do window.geometry without this e, like so. And here we need to pass an argument, a string argument. Of course, as the name of a property might suggest, we need to add both width and height. So we do, for example, 600 for 600. We can now set another important property, the title. So we can do window.title and we can pass something like hello tk hinter. Okay? Very well, now that we've created our window and defined the geometry and title property, we can have a look at how our user interface is looking. And so we now need to call a method on our window instance, and this method is called main loop. We do window.main loop, and the main loop method allows us to execute our window. We can now go and run our script. You can of course execute the script however you prefer, considering that I'm using Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to go with the debug feature. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our first TK Inter window. As we can see, it's a square 600 by 600. Of course, the layout and its colors might appear slightly different depending on the operating system that you're using. As I said, I'm using Linux Manjaro, therefore I have this specific layout. At the moment, it's possible to resize our windows just by dragging the mouse cursor like this, like a normal window, as this is the default behavior of windows created with TK Inter. We can, however, adjust this setting by adding a new property, by defining a new property for our window, like so. Window.resizable, to which I pass false and false. I'm passing false to time in order to match both width and height of our window. We can also adjust the background color of our interface by setting window.configure and passing something like background And I could, for example, say just red, just for us to actually see that the background has changed or something that maybe is more appropriate, like white. And there you go. Let's comment these two lines at the moment as we won't need them anymore. 
And let's see how to add some functionality to our interface. After all, what we're doing is creating a user interface, a graphical user interface. We're providing our users an easier way to access the functionalities that are offered by our program. And the most common widget that a user can interact with in a graphical user interface is, of course, a button. So let's create our first button by doing tk dot button and the very first parameter that we want to pass is text which will correspond to the text that our button will show of course so we can say for example hello we will soon see how to connect our button to a function that will eventually execute by pressing the button before doing that however we need to find a way to define the location of our button within our interface right and we can do so easily by using the grid geometry now this is not the only way we can use to uh, actually define a position for our widgets however it is the most recent and frankly probably the most powerful one it's based on a system of rows and columns so that we can clearly define the position of a specific widget on this grid layout that we're eventually going to have. So let's start by defining row and I'm going to pass the value zero and the same thing I want to do for column, okay? Passing zero. So what do you think? Where is this button going to appear? Well, I said the first row, row zero, right? And the first column, column zero. So it's gonna be on top left let's execute our script and here we have it there it is our hello button very well well let's see now how to actually connect this button to a function as we've said so i'm going to define a function def first function like so and for now i can just use the pass instruction because now that I've defined a function, I actually want to add another line of code to our script. If name equals main, then in that case, I'm going to execute our window by calling the main loop method. I can now connect first function to first button just by passing another parameter to our button. So command and I pass the function's name. In this case, first function. And this is all really cool, of course. However, calling an empty function is not going to be all that useful. We have to define the code for our first function. So let's define a variable called text to which I just pass the string hello world. So in order to actually show our string in output within our interface, we need to define another widget. And one of the most common widgets used to show text within our interfaces is the label widget. So let's go ahead and define this widget. We can call it text output, like so. And we can create it by calling tk.label. And we need, of course, to pass a couple of parameters. First of all, window, which is the name of the main widget, right? And then, because this is a label, we have to pass a text. So text, and we just pass a variable text. We now need to define a position for our widget the same way we've defined a position for our button. So we do text output dot grid, and we pass row and column. It's going to be row zero, because we want it on the same row of our button, but we're going to have to pass one to the column parameter in order to actually show our string next to our button. Very well, let's go ahead and execute. Here we have our window, here we have our button, let's click it, and here we have it. Hello world, very well. Labels are really cool and we can also define some properties for the text shown. For example, we can pass a color or a different font family or a different size for the font used. So for example, I could do something like fg which means foreground and i might pass red and then i might pass something like font defining our font so i could for example say helvetica and maybe something like 16 in size so let's go ahead and reload our user interface a program 
hello and we have hello world which is now red and 16th in size okay very well we're starting to understand how to position our widget and use them let's say we now want to have a second button right below our first one that will show another label another sentence another string next to it so i just need to go ahead and copy the code this is going to be second button like so I'm just gonna have to copy it right here but now of course i need to change row because i want it on the row below the one that is used by our first button so row one it's okay to leave column zero as we want it right below once again our first button we can however change its text i might say something like second function like so and I will need, of course, to connect another function if I want to actually trigger a different function, right? So I might have to define it first, like so. This is going to be second function. And I can change the text just as well. New function or something like new message, new function, okay? Now I might want to change the properties of a widget like the font color. We can leave name and size, rather family and size. Of course, I also need to change row, right? Yeah, okay, it seems like things should work pretty well, right? Well, let's test it out, okay? Let's reload our script. Let's trigger our first button first, hello world, and then second function. And yeah, cool, it works, really good. However, the layout is quite different from what one might expect to find, right? It seems like every widget is kind of centered within its own column and this might be okay, but then we see that each column is taking its largest widget size, right? And this might get messy pretty easily, so let's fix it. We can define another parameter, okay? And this parameter is sticky, so I just Define it like so, okay, I pass it to the grid property, so sticky, and I pass the position to which I want my widget to stick to. And the position is expressed using the cardinal points, so north, south, west, east, okay? So, because I want it on the left, I'm going to pass W, west. And the same thing I can do for all the other widgets, like so, to three and four cool let's execute first i need to save it let's execute the script and here we have them now each widget sticks as we can see to the left so let's go ahead and trigger them hello and second function perfect before finishing the video let's see now how to actually provide some space to our widgets meaning let's see how to space them out in the interface so let's say I want to add some padding top bottom, okay, to our second function. So it has some space on top and on bottom, all right? I can do it like so. From within the grid property, I just add another parameter, pad y, and I add something like 20. And let's say that I also want to move the new message, new function string a little bit on the right, or better, let's say I want to provide some padding horizontally, all right? I can do something like this. Pad x, and I can define something like, I can pass something like 50. So let's go ahead and execute the script once again. And here we have the padding, as you can see. So I can just call hello world, okay, everything is usual. But triggering second function, we can now see that some padding has been added horizontally to our second message. Very well people, thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, only if you're interested in new videos about Python and programming in general. Thank you again folks, stay awesome, happy coding and see you in the next video.